Yo, it's Fano here, the Finnish Ableton geek. I know you know Ableton Live is dope and tight, but I'll drop you 10 or so pro tips that will make the experience even doper and tighter. Let's do this. So first one is if you like to do audio stuff, I have this drum loop here. And maybe I wanna duplicate some parts and do some editing. Okay, let's see. So it's nice to be able to slice the audio. No, sorry, slide the audio. Slicing is, is nice too, but uh, sliding like this, this is pretty handy. When I hold shift and option on Mac, you can do this. This is based on the grid, so it can go in steps or not. So when you wanna really fine hone your audio, that is super nice to do. Tip two. Auto filter for some high sheen. So let's get auto filter and let's do this. I'm going to use some uh, one of these analog modeled filters and I'm going to add a little bit of resonance and move the frequency around. What I want to create is a little bit of high frequency sheen, a little bit of sparkle on the sound. This will give you something that EQ doesn't necessarily do. Keep the frequency fairly high, around 10 to 12K. Be careful with the resonance, but uh, set it to taste. So you wanna add a little bit of sparkle, not too much. If you go way too low, it'll sound really awful. And be mindful about the resonance because that's hurtful for your ears. Bonus tape relating to auto filter. Let me just get a, a bass sound. This could probably do. Okay, let me put um, auto filter there once again. And um, let's use the drive. I'm gonna use the OSR. Okay, I gotta turn it down on uh, no, so I'm gonna put utility after it. I'm gonna turn down the gain. But this drive is amazing if you like to create growly basses, drum and bass jungle. So you can take a fairly mellow bass and using these analog model filters, this will give you the drive option. So comparing. You can create a bit of analog distortion, which helps the signal if you're that way inclined. Since we're talking about bass, let's take this fairly tonal bass here. It's loud. It's fun to take something fairly tonal that is like a bass that has a lot of harmonics and enable warp mode and then just stretch it and see what it gives you. So this is the original. Let's stretch it. Shift, drag. So these can give you lots of different tones. It's great for experimentation with any sort of sound, basically. It's also worth it trying these different algorithms for warping and if they change the sound. Ooh. A bit of a pitch wobble. Where was I? And you could even maybe draw some pitching. It's a bonus tip. I don't know, maybe that's gonna be something wild. Hey, it kind of works. So time stretching can be your friend. Since we're talking about creating new sounds, let's do just that. Let's use wavetable synth i'll put it on the track and uh, one great thing about the wavetable is it's a synth but you can drop a sample into it so i was thinking about the good old mintasm sample that i probably have here okay so let's 
play wavetable. I'll just drag Mantasm here. So this is the original. Into wavetable it goes. And this does not sound like it, but let me, I first have to find the right pitch. And then we're going to have envelope to modulate the wavetable position. Let's do that. So uh, let's go to a uh, matrix and envelope two is going to modulate the position. And then we're going to mess with envelope two. So let's do this. <laughs> so this was the original. My pitch is off a little bit. Obviously, you get these all these wavetable mangling. Oh, dude, I gotta love this. Okay, I'm. I'm definitely drifting away from the original, but my point is, if you have a sound that you like and you like to do a bit of experimentation, take a sample, drop it to Wavetable and do the Wavetable scanning and mangle that a bit. For example, with basses, this can be super fruitful. So give it a try. One of the things that I really love in today's music production world is what you can do to drums. I have this drum loop here. One of my favorite tools in Ableton Live is Drum Bus. So let's put it there and let's see what this guy can do. So there's a few things I want to point out. First, let's say if, if we wanted to re-synthesize or just create some low end synthesis here, we can do that. So let's raise the boom. Ooh. So you can hear how the kick gets so much bigger. This DK parameter determines how long the boom is. I don't want a long bass. I just, uh, I want a short one, but I want some more weight. So you just gotta hone in this frequency. That, that is nice. That's not all. This transient control is unbelievable. So when you go counterclockwise, you you're left with transients. Basically, it's like gating. It's sort of very very modern. And here it's almost like really compressed where the low level signal comes up. What if I double this? <laughs> I don't even know. Do I want to know? That's, that's pretty sick. So. That slams. Since we got to the drum zone, I want to show you a few instances of multiband dynamics of Ableton Live and what it can do. I will not explain this fully. There's a video on this channel that does just that. So if you want to learn that, check, check out the video. But multiband dynamics can really transform the drum loop. Let's hear this. This is the original. I'm gating it, I'm cleaning it, I'm taking away the noise, the reverb, the room sound. That's just so unbelievably good. You can sort of modernize if you take a noisy drum loop. By the way, I love noisy drum loops, but if you want to clean it up, you can do that. Upward compression. 
Oh my god. It's like, this is almost the complete opposite of what Gating was doing. Because Gating is kind of cleaning it up. And this, what I'm doing here is raising the low level dirt, which just, dude. It's also crazy that the overall level is not raising that much. I know it raises a little bit, but still, look at the level. That is insanity. Right, let's take this kick and give it a, some more snap. Yeah, you know, you're just jamming in Bergheim, right? And you're thinking like, how could I make that kick more snappy? This sound is in sampler, which gives us FM synthesis. Pitch, ask, tab, and let's enable ask. And FM is selected here. That's frequency modulation. And we can use that to help our kick. Let's start by raising this uh, volume parameter here. What's happening? Let me tweak this a little bit. sure you can hear this. So, as you see, I didn't do much. This is uh, this offers frequency modulation, which technically it modulates the pitch of the sound. And this envelope is like a graphic representation of how how the modulation happens. So technically, it comes in super quick and goes out super quick too. So if I made the envelope this, like this, it's there all the time. It's technically, it's modulating the pitch of the sound and for the kick pur purposes, it sounds pretty stupid. Basses, it would be great. So it just makes a super quick visitation to the sound, to the signal, and then, and then it's gone. So. You can use this technique to add a bit of click to your sound. And also note that this chorus pitch, this is the pitch of the uh, modulation signal. So the higher it is, the more tonal the click becomes. But set this to taste, give it a go. So speaking of sampler, I admit I use sampler more than simpler. There's a few good things about sampler that makes it a great tool. One thing you cannot do with sampler is automate or modulate the sample start point. Check it out. Even if you look at it in MIDI mapping mode, it cannot be mapped and you cannot draw automation for that. But there's a workaround for that. So I've loaded up this sound. Check it out. And I want to do this old old school time stretch, which is uh, a little tricky, but not super hard to do. So we're going to go to modulation tab. We're going to enable aux envelope. And here, sample offset is what this envelope is now modulating. This is sort of similar to what I just showed you, uh, the FM trick inside sampler. So I've drawn this repeating mini notes. I want to do this old school stuttery thing. So it's not doing anything yet. The one thing you want to modulate or just automate or draw automation for is this. Let's first crank this level up. So now this peak level. Technically now this is our sample start point parameter. There's something about the grainy time stretch sound that I just like. So now we just gotta go and um, this is the parameter you wanna draw automation for. So we got it here, envelopes, and let's just uh, do just that. Try this. Check it out. Check it out. 
So now the sample start point is being automated, modulated. A simpler tip, there's many good reasons to love a simpler too, but one thing that annoys me is you cannot control the amount of how much the pitch bend controls the pitch of the sound. I mean, this is the sound that I have. I did a simple loop here. And let's go and draw some pitch bend. Obviously, I could use a controller, but I want to see, you can see, I'll just draw the pitch bend up and down like this. And inside this device, you cannot control how much control you have overall. So there's a tip for this. You convert it to sampler and you go to modulation tab. No, sorry, MIDI. You can see the pitch bend flicker there and you see the range here. So if I want it to be two octaves, that's the maximum. Okay, it's a lot. I don't know, whatever, one octave. Could be that convert it back to simpler and now or i mean if you want to stay in sampler that could work and now you have the range that you can set but if you want to convert it back to simpler you can the drawback is you is the, it's in this multi-sample mode but now you got the amount of pitch bend that you desire i really want to mention this because this is really one of the big things in ableton live for me clips so you can save clips to a clips folder and it means that when you bring it in you get everything you had on the track when you saved the clip so here i have an instrument uh, a midi effect and i could even maybe i want to put a if i put a reverb there let's do just that Reverb, let's create a massive reverb. Let's give it a new name, new tool. And let me demonstrate it to you. You just drag it here, give it a new name. And even if you create a new MIDI track, you bring in the clip and you get everything you had on the track. See? So this is a big thing for me because I sort of separate music making sessions and sound design sessions. So I create lots of chords and basses and melodies and stuff, and I save those as clips. So for example, this could be something I'll just load up and build a song around. Like I put it here and let me vibe out on this. So the point is I save ideas. I save things and clips that inspire me and just then, when I need some source of inspiration, I look into my clips folder and it gives me that inspiration and new ideas. Use it. Another big creative thing for me, an absolute selling point in Ableton Live for me is the ability to take the MIDI information out of a audio clip. So I have this core thing probably stole it from YouTube. And if I don't want to use the sample, I just want to get the notes. Well, I'm not classically trained, so I don't know what notes it should be specifically. So I can just convert harmony to new MIDI track and let's compare real quick. So this was the original. This is what I get. I get literally the exact chords. It's not even just the notes. You can do melody and drums too, like the rhythm, but this chord thing has been blowing my mind. The amount of jazz chords that I've stolen from YouTube and just uh, converted into chords information and then just loaded my own instrument on it. This is uh, this has literally been a uh, game changer for me. I love it.